great, and they're one of my most favorite types of snakes, but they have a real reputation for not wanting to eat in captivity. So it's tough. We see a lot, a lot of them. And in the fall, we see even more of them because even little teeny temperature changes sometimes set them off. And reptiles don't eat unless they're, you probably read this, they're at their preferred optimal temperature zone, right? And you can make everything perfect and they won't eat necessarily. And it has nothing to do with what you're doing because it sounds like you're doing really, really well and other than changing his bedding um, to something paper-based so that if he eats it a little bit, it doesn't get stuck inside and uh, have problems. Um, sometimes you just can't make the meat. We, we can try all different kinds of things. And we should check a poop sample, a little stool sample. Do we have any in here? Just, you know what? I don't have any. I don't have any Disney. stool samples. Yeah, all I have is that. But yeah, that, I think that's urine, urine, urine right? right? Yes. So mm -hmm. I brought that in yeah. just so you could look at that. Well, you know, what we'll do. Maybe we'll do today is we'll tube feed him. We'll give him some food through a tube, and um, hopefully, he, in a couple of days, he'll pass the stool and we collect it and bring it in. Do you guys live locally? Yeah, no. No. Sure. Drop it off the chance. Huh? <laughs> oh, do you? Okay. Um, delivery. <laughs> delivery. Um, You're so, um, okay. so we should check them for parasites. We have to assume that all of them have parasites at some level, so we usually recommend doing some deworming. So we could give him some dewormer today and give him a chaser of food um, to get him going. And sometimes if we get him going, they start to eat on their own. Um, and it sounds like, you know, there's not a lot that you have to correct in your husbandry. I mean, giving him, doing the ultraviolet light and making sure you're changing the, the, um, the light every four to six months. The bedding, we talked about paper-based bedding is much safer. Setting up your temperature zones the way you have where, you know, the cool end is no lower than 70, 75. The warm end is up in the high 90s so he can bask. Um, having a hide box, making sure he's not spending all his time in the hide box. Um, misting him or soaking him to keep him better hydrated because he's not eating is important too. Sometimes just misting or soaking can stimulate them to eat a little bit. Um, so that's another thing you can do. And help them shed. Mm -hmm. It definitely will help him shed. He needs that. And you need to sort of measure the humidity in the tank too. And do you have um, a little hygrometer or something that measures humidity? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's another thing that you we need have to get a, a thermometer. thermometer. Yep. The yeah, and you should have thermometers in the warm zone and the cool zone. But you should also have a hygrometer, which will tell you the percentage humidity. And you really do want like 60% humidity at least. So, um, yeah. But ball pythons, when you read about ball pythons, they're usually the, the number one type of snake in captivity that doesn't want to eat. And actually, I remembered reading, and I was just reading again, that you know, I know you try pinkies and fuzzies and mice and all kinds, and he's not a big guy, so you can't really try huge, huge prey items. But trying pieces of things and making them kind of juicy so that he, he's interested in them is a good thing. But some people have actually tried feeding gerbils. Sure. It's a little different, and so some people have actually tried. Dwarf hamsters and stuff? No, well, not hamsters, but gerbils. Yeah, yes. they have less hair. Little um, ones. Little yeah. tiny ones. So that would be another thing. It's not the most favorite thing in the whole world to try, but you could try that. It's a novel or different kind of food item, and you might be interested in it to see them going. Um, we do have a powdered formula that you can feed him. Um, if you've tried, I mean, will he take pieces of mouse if you cut them off and you give him pieces of the, of the tweezer? Have you tried that? No, we've, um, but we have, like, taken the mouse and cut open the scalp because yeah, they aim for the brain, right. so. Yeah. Well, I mean, you could try taking pieces of mouse and sort of really dangling them in front of him and, and even trying to open his mouth a little bit and just putting them in his mouth and seeing if he'll swallow them. So <laughs> in there. Yeah, this is a lot of fun. Um, but um, that's another thing you can try to do. And there is, we'll give him some food to start today. But let's take a look at him. Okay. I think we're going to hold off on that. Yeah, it's one of those things you're female. asking us Her, to do. Her, I need to look at. Things that I'll end up doing. Um, up that's the way it goes. Yeah, I know I have a 11 year old too. <laughs> we have lots of pets. Okay. Yeah. We have to have lots of pets. <laughs> See what she's doing to her? Okay. Yeah. Come stand by me. You can see. You want to see his mouth? Cool. I've seen her see. mouth before. Her mouth. I've got her. Saying his. I've, I've so got that's her, her, her trachea before. right down there. That's how she breathes. That tube right there. And then her teeth. You want to stay clear of. <laughs> she's really yeah. appreciating this. Yeah. <laughs> she's a lot not happy. <laughs> when did she last shed? Um, the end of July. Yeah. Okay. First part of August. Yeah. So her eyes up there. Yay, her eyes are good, but yeah, her eyes are good. I mean, it's really, really hard to tell if a snake sees. They don't really track objects very, very well. Oh, that um, would be why, okay. Yeah, I mean, it's when they want to, they can, but to prove yeah. it, they'll just sit there. They won't necessarily fall, feel things, uh, see things, but um, yeah, she's skinny. 
She actually has a bunch of gas in here too. When we run our hands down, you can almost hear it. Just listen. A little popping? A little bit. Yeah. I just moved a big gas bubble down. Why did I end up with gas? Well, I mean, she could have a little gastroenteritis. She's not really eating anything, so okay. nothing's moving around through there. Okay. Um, so, we'll feed her, and maybe the act of just getting her going will help her. Will help. Because yeah. I don't know when she was fed. I don't know. Like, yeah. they got her at the expo, yeah. and I have no idea. They didn't yeah. ask when she'd been fed, what she'd been fed, you know, when the last yeah. time was she ate. So I have no idea. Well, I have a question. Yeah. Is her skin supposed to be, like, loose like that? That's because she's lost a lot of muscle. Oh. <coughs> okay. It shouldn't be loose like that. It should be nice and filled out with muscle. But so she's lost muscle because she hasn't eaten. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. Yeah, there's gas. Awesome. Yeah, I just heard it. the popping? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, we could soak her a little bit, definitely. It's going to keep her well hydrated. And um, just trying to see if I feel like it. Mm -hmm. It's pretty gassy. <laughs> yeah. Small candy. She has a little bit. <laughs> it's interesting because she has, feels like a little bit of poop right there. Yeah, lots of gas. <laughs> Poor baby. <laughs> So they can't fart. You have to like. Well, you know what it is. She doesn't have anything moving along there. What makes their their intestines move is food. Well, and she doesn't eat. She doesn't have any. So maybe if we give her some food, we'll get her going. So I guess what I would do is I would start with let's tube feed her today. Let's give her some dewormer and see what we can get moving. And then we're gonna want to see her again. She's just got poop right here. Well, that means that means she's like eaten then. Well, there's at something. Some it may be your. It could be your answer your too. It's just something solid. See it? It's slipping. You can see it slipping in my fingers. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, let's let's see what she does. Let's make sure her environment is perfect and keep her really well hydrated. We want to see her again in about seven to ten days to give her a second dewormer. And if she isn't, if she's still gassy and not eating anything at that point, we could try, there's another medication that will help move some of the gas through and see what we can do. And if all else fails, Press we should think head. about, you know, taking an x-ray. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. It's okay, you're okay. just want to make sure. I do feel a few little lumps and bumps, and those are probably urates. I mean, her skin looks fine. She's just skinny. She's very uh, happy being handled. Like, yeah, she's being handled. Very, yeah, she's very docile. She's very sweet. I don't know that nice. Bent. I mean, there's nothing I can see obviously with her other than she's a little gassy and she's a little skinny. Okay, so we would just deworm today. We use a combination of two different dewormers that get most parasites, but once you pass the stool, if you bring a sample in, we can really check to see if there's anything else that we're not covering. Okay. And then we do it again because we do the first dose today and it kills off the adult parasites and the are any. Um, eggs that hatch out again, we do a second round, and then usually we're okay. We just check once a year, and there's nothing that they're bringing in with a nice... Are we feeding. just giving her medicine today, or are we actually mm -hmm. feeding her? We're going to do both. Yeah, yeah, we're going to do both. She doesn't have mice, though, for me. Not that I see, no. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, I don't. No. Yeah. All right, can we borrow her for a couple minutes? Sure. Okay. All right, she's